Hi there, welcome to Dylan Has Movies. I'm Dylan, and I have movies. Today's video, we're going to be talking about The Unholy, Sony Pictures' latest horror film helmed by first-time director Evan Spiliotopoulos. Let's check it out. The Unholy stars Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Carrie Elwes, and the newcomer Cricket Brown as a young girl who, despite having been born deaf, has miraculously begun to hear, and she starts telling everyone that none other than the Virgin Mary has started to talk to her. Of course, the audience knows that this is poppycock, but it's fun to watch everyone who isn't in on the joke react as if it's gospel. Jeffrey Dean Morgan stars as Jerry Fenn, a washed-up journalist who's writing pieces for a website that focuses on strange supernatural occurrences, like the image of Jesus appearing on burnt toast. He finds his way to Banfield, Massachusetts over a report that's almost immediately dismissed as phony, but while he's there, he accidentally lets loose a demon which puts the plot in motion. There really isn't much to say about The Unholy because of just how many times we've seen this movie before. It's incredibly reminiscent of The Conjuring films and other PG-13 horror efforts that are marketed specifically to get teenagers into theaters during the summer. Its biggest flaw is that it's just so damn boring. I'm sure by now you can guess that I'm going to give this movie a bad review, but it's not even worth dragging through the mud. It's just an incredibly unremarkable film, and in a way, that is the worst thing that anybody can say about a film, is that it's just so underwhelming. Being derivative of other well-known and established horror films does not a good film make. Choosing to cherry-pick and lift different aspects from other material only serves to remind the audience that better material already exists that they could be watching. It's like trying to finish a thousand-piece puzzle with assorted pieces from other sets. Sure, it gets the job done, but you can easily see which parts don't belong when you look at the end result. Another aspect that works against the unholy is the visuals. The entire film is just crammed with grays, browns, and tans, and the best way I could possibly describe the image is that of an open open field of dead wheat. It's just about as visually arresting as a handful of dirt. All of the colors of the film had the life drained out of them. Once bright and vibrant colors of clothing, stained glass windows, the eyes of characters, and even the scenery are now just bland and ugly. Even the scenes during the third act that feature fire don't look like red on screen. They now look like something closer to a blonde or even a flaxen. It's like the filmmakers looked inside of a cardboard box and went, this. It's just a sea of moping, sad faces, all bathed in these ugly shades of brown for the entire film. There's absolutely nothing worth celebrating when it comes to the visuals. And that's unfortunate, because one of the best parts to some of the most well-known horror films is how it looks. How it uses its color. Even for any other film, this color palette would look like trash. Aside from the look of the film, the plot is also just an assortment of tired cliches to be checked off while the runtime coasts on autopilot. It. it tries its damnedest to keep a hold of your attention, but more than a handful of times I found my eyes were looking at my phone. While you'd be forgiven for thinking this was an original work due to its haphazard planning, seemingly put together in an attempt to get some money out of newly reopened theaters, I'm sorry to say it was actually adapted from a 1983 novel by James Herbert. I don't necessarily think the source material is the problem entirely, however, I think it's thanks to the director who also wrote the screenplay. Evan Spiliotopoulos has spent most of his career writing for direct-to-DVD Disney movies like Cinderella 3, The Little Mermaid Ariel's Beginning, Tarzan 2, The Jungle Jungle Book 2, and I'm assuming that this was an attempt at branching into more mature subjects. But ultimately, I think he bit off a little bit more than he could chew. He wrote the screenplay for this movie based on a book, and somehow all of the characters are made into these two-dimensional, flat-as-cardboard, boring characters. There's no arc, no depth to them at all. You, there's nobody to root for. None of the characters come across as interesting or, you know, worth saving. You know, I just, I can't root for any of them. I don't care. This is just a weak attempt at trying to cash in on similar movies. I expected this kind of effort from The Asylum trying to parody The Nun, but honestly, I don't think Sony has a great track record with their horror films, and this is just adding fuel to that fire. The Unholy is wholly uninteresting. It's just a middle-of-the-road, boring film, and I'm gonna forget that I watched it I am. I will scroll past the picture in a couple months and go, have I seen- oh yeah, I did see that. And it will completely be erased from the back of my mind. I'm not gonna watch it again. I will probably never recommend it to anybody. 
but if it seems like something that you would probably enjoy, go ahead and watch it. Please don't let me stop you from checking out something that you might enjoy. I don't want to be the one to deter somebody from finding something new that they might like. So with all that said, that was my thoughts on The Unholy. If you liked it, cool. If you didn't, that's fine. I don't care. 